Okay, g'day everyone. I'm Max. I love doing 360 photography, uh, especially and uploading it to Google Maps. My photos of 360, my 360 photos have been seen over 200 million times, uh, and, and I, uh, you, nobody knows Google's algorithm. But I think that's because I take nice photos. I use this camera, um, and and this I used to use this one. I use Theta Theta V cameras, and Paul actually owns one, um, but they're great and they are preferred by Google. Um, there's a range of supported cameras by Google. Most of them supported, but this one, the way it works, is it has a lens on both sides, and it takes one photo, uh, two, sorry, these two photos at the same time, and then it stitches it together um, in, uh, in the camera, and then you can upload it to Google. Um, but the great thing with 360 photos is that now anyone with a phone uh, can do it yourself. So uh, and ever, anyone with an Android or iPhone can do it yourself. So I'm going to encourage everyone to, to get the app open. It's called, the app that allows you to do it. It's called Street View. Um, so this is the app here. Um, and uh, so if everyone can open that app up and then put like a thumbs up in the chat when you've got that app, app open. Um, uh, so yeah, and and I'll, and I'll walk, we'll, and then once you have the thumbs up open, we'll, I'll walk everyone through the um, the, the process. Um, and then uh, actually, Paul, can you put a link to the album, a link to the album, the, the, the photos album in the chat? Because afterwards, we're going to all put our photo, 360 photos into uh, into uh, in, into the chat together. So the way it works is you. I really, there's a little button down the bottom where you press the little take a photo thing. And so you do that and then, oh, sorry, wait. There. Nope. Back. Back. Yeah. So you go to click the profile first on the app and then you press the little camera button down the bottom. And then you go take photo sphere. Click take photosphere, and then you'll need to stand up for this part, or you'll need um, and you'll need to actually um, unplug your headphones if you had headphones in. So you click take photosphere, and now I'm going to take a photosphere in my apartment. So um, you open your camera up. You you sometimes need to give permissions. So you know I need to give permissions, and then you see a little orange dot, and so you get hover the orange dot over the part of the camera and then you'll need to take a step around and follow all the orange dots around the room and take uh and take a photo so each every time you are taking the orange dot you're taking a photo in android it's a blue dot <gasps> okay blue dot orange dot thank you paul um so i'm getting all of these little dots now i just look like a normal guy don't i paul this looks totally normal you don't look like some strange ballerina at all. So you can imagine doing this in the, the middle of a shopping centre somewhere or a, in a, a nice restaurant or something like that where you're just casually taking a 360 <laughs> with the phone. Yeah. And I think you can see why most people prefer to use a 360 camera. The phone works <laughs> fairly nicely. It usually stitches the image fairly well. But as you can see, it takes a while and people are certainly going to notice you're doing it. <laughs> I think that I think it's good. It's great the use of existing technology. I mean, you've already got the phone. You don't have, you know, it's effectively free because everyone has a. Most people already have a phone. They do indeed, and it, it's a great gateway to getting into the street view photography. I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but there's actually a cousin program, if you like, to the local guides program. In local guides, you're probably all aware that we um, can't get paid and we can't make any money, we can't get any rewards from places that we review or take photos for or put onto maps, the Street View Trusted Photographer Program, assuming it's still called that this week, because I know they're going through a revamp and Google love renaming stuff when they do that, <laughs> it's, you actually can make money. So you still can't make money for reviews or adding your day-to-day -day photos, and but you can actually be employed 
to create 360 imagery and create what's called virtual tours, which I imagine Max will probably get into later on. And you can also make money for managing people's Google My Business entries. So while you can't get paid for the local guides activity of putting them on the map, if you do it through GMB, Google My Business, um, you can. Uh, yes, that's very true. And so, um, I, I, so the silliness is over. I'm not going to be. I have done it. I've gone around in circles like a maniac. <laughs> so the first time I did this, I, I, I was using the Google app, and I was in a hotel in the Philippines with my wife, and it said, "Would you like to create a photosphere?" And I was like, "You know, why not?" So I clicked yes, and then it prompted me to download the app, and I downloaded the app, and ever since that's what really got me excited to do 360 photography. It was actually doing a photosphere it was my first my first go at it. Um, so now the little Google man is putting it all together um, on the little Google man assembles it all. Um, and it's going pretty quickly. It usually takes about a minute or a minute or less, but it's pretty amazing for a mobile phone, you know, tech to do that in a lot of time. Um, do you know what? Don't actually, if anybody here does have a three Android version. Um, I think uh, I'm not sure. I, I, oh, yeah. actually, I know. It's I been a while since because the... Android's got AR yeah. core. It's still it doing the 360 yeah, on. Exactly. It does the 360 on chip in the phone while you're actually taking the picture. Oh, uh -huh. that's pretty cool. Okay, so then you then let's load it up. Let's have a look. This I know it's not perfect, but this is this is the photosphere in of my apartment. And there's the, the, the playpen for my my baby Shifra. But you can see for a for a for a, a I, just for a phone, it's actually really. I'm very impressed with the the quality. Now, this is I'm very I, and, and I'm, I'm I've done this many times. So if your first one's not as good as this, don't worry about it because it, it takes time getting used to it. You, um, but yeah, that's how you do it. Um, if anybody else has done that, please put it into the the, the link the album album of the week because I'd love to check out your ones, and I will put this in that as well. Um, and that is how you do a 360 photo, photo from your iPhone or Android phone. <laughs> um, maybe that could be the task of the week because I noticed it's kind of hard to do it while if, if, I'm not noticing people not really doing it while the presentation is going because it's very hard. If you want to do it later when, when we're not in the, the seminar, you, you, can, you can also do it later and then upload it to the folder. Um, yeah, excuse me for one second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't blowing my nose. I promise. Um, no, it's not doubles on camera, Max. <laughs> um. So, uh, that's. Do you want to talk? Do you want to talk yeah. about the business side of uh, three hundred and sixty inside at all? Somebody yeah. So, so might be interested in, in a way to make a, a career out of it. So I've had some restaurants um, reach out to me on Instagram or some uh, some shopping centres, and they've asked me to come into their space and take some 360 photos for for Google My Business for their tenants. And so I've done that. I brought my, my my special camera and and my tripod, and I've taken a series of cameras photos, and then I upload it to Google Maps, and then they pay me three or four hundred dollars each time. Um, so that's a good uh, side hustle uh, to to get a bit of money. Um, yeah, it's a really cool way to, to do it. Um, and th th they know that my photo is going to be seen by lots of people because I have a, a good good local guide account, which seems to be seen by a lot of photo views. So it's, um, yeah, sometimes shopping centres have really n nasty 360 photos. Like it might be a photo of their loading bay where the, the Google Street View tr the truck is just, or bus is j uh, or car is just driven by and just it's taking a photo of their loading dock or their car park. It's not a great representation of the center so to hire a trusted local guide a trusted guide it's trusted street street view trusted <laughs> street view trusted photographer street view trusted photographer it, for now um is a great way to get a great image of your center on google maps um the other interesting thing is you can then also embed that on their website so you can put that virtual tour even though it's on google maps you can embed that on your website so people can check it out on the website as well Yes, indeed. Um, it's quite a, an interesting thing to do. Now, if you do take up the street, Google Street View Trusted Photographer program. It's not easy, is it? <laughs> it's no, it's not easy. 
It's probably why they'll rename it. Um, you need to be particularly careful about the conflict of interest between that and your local guides. Now, there's some stale advice out on the internet, and I'll call this out because it's definitely not true and it will actually get you in trouble. The, um, the stale advice says to create a second account for Street View Trusted Photographer. Definitely don't do that. You can use your local guide's account, it's fine. Uh, but just make sure that you keep the two activities very separate and keep uh, the best way to do it is to keep a diary of your professional work and what you've done versus your local guides work. So if you and you don't need to write down the local guide stuff because your timeline will cover that pretty well. But just write down the professional stuff and what capacity you did it. Uh, to get into the trusted program is fairly easy, although it takes a little while. Because uh, I think you, I think I think they've actually paused. I think they've paused people being allowed into the trusted view program for them for the moment. They're letting people into the program, but they're not adding them on to connect. So you don't get the badge, but they, you can still get into the program. So I clarified that yesterday just to make sure. Uh, if you generate 50 photo spheres using the Street View app or in some other app, as Falguni mentioned, and then uploading them through the Street View app, that does work. Uh, you, that gets you into the point where you can turn on the trusted switch in that app. And that will, after they check out your um, 360s that you've put up, and if they decide that they're of a sufficient quality to be acceptable, they'll then send you a email with a link for how to apply. Um, you can, in the meantime, if you just Google Street View Trusted Photographer Earn, E-A-R-N, um, that'll take you to some instructions for how to do it. Yeah, and I think getting that trusted badge really does help your your photo views go up. And I think it I mean I think the algorithm um, uh, shows trusted photographers photos more than non trusted. And that's a gut feeling. I don't have any. I don't know what the algorithm shows, but that's what I feel like the algorithm shows. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether it does or not. Um, I do know that if you submit a 360 and it's the only one as a Street View trusted photographer, it does automatically become the headline 360 for the place. Yeah. If there aren't, if there aren't any others. And if a local guide puts one up later, yours will stay there because the SPTP mm. one is, is higher. And I, I've seen that through personal experience, so I know that happens. Yeah. And um, I was, I, when you're talking about the difference between professional and personal one, uh, when I take 360 photo tours, uh, th uh, th uh, a 360 degree tour of the premises, I don't upload it from my personal account. Uh, most of the time I upload it from the Google My Business platform. Um, which is the, the way the businesses manage Google. Um, but it's not really, it's, I'm not going to go into it today, but um, I, that it's a separate platform. So that's only associated with the business and not with me. Yep. And if you want to create the tours, so you, you may have visited a business that's got several 360 images and you can step from image to image to image and go on a tour around the business looking at different features. Um, if you want to make those tours, you can do it with the Street View app, but I'd recommend that you don't because if it's a particularly painful process and it's quite difficult, there's a lot of uh, commercial options that you can either subscribe to or you can pay a once off to get into it. If you're doing it professionally, it's worth using one of those. If you're not going to take it up professionally, using the Street View app is the way to do it. Yeah, I mean, the Street View, it's, it's free, so it's a good way to do your first one or two. Um, yeah, but then you need. I think if you're at a professional level, you need to you need to pay for this. Yeah, yeah but um, I've got it. We've got some comments here. Creating 360 photo spheres is very very interesting, but attracts too much attention in public places, and some people might find it offensive as well. Very <laughs> true. Yeah, very they can true. do. Yeah, they can do. Um, which is why Max showed you that camera <laughs> earlier. I think I've got mine over there somewhere. I'm not going to try and risk getting that bag over there. It's got too many lenses in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ananda says that link to the 360 isn't mine. I just had a look at the title. It's I was there, but it's not the that's not the photo. Is that a link that you posted in the chat? Oh, okay, awesome. All right. Um, um, and Neil's asked yeah. how to do the stitching. Um, as Falguni's replied, yeah, that does actually happen by itself in the Street View app. It just does it for you. Uh, and most and most 360 cameras um, in the in the in the entry range do it for you as well. You have to sort of get up to that very pro and prosumer level when sometimes you might want to do it yourself. I don't do it myself personally. It's just automatic is best usually. <laughs> yep. um, well, not best, it's just easier. It's scalable. Yeah. You might remember back in one of the earlier sessions where we talked about various different lenses. 
Um, one of the ultra wide lenses, if you remember, was called a fisheye. If you take two shots with a fisheye, one facing that way, and then one facing in the opposite direction, you can stitch those together quite easily and make a 360 out of them. You will need some software to do that though. Um, I've actually got this new 360 camera here. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually demonstrate how to do a, a photosphere with it. You ready? So you, you go like <laughs> like this, and like this, and like this, and like this, and then up like this. I'm gonna laugh like if this. he throws up on you. And like this, and like this, and then down, <laughs> and then like this, like this, like this, like this. Like this. <laughs> so just for video clearance purposes. Max, is it okay to have your child in the video? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's good. Thank you. Like, thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, maybe clip it out. Oh, whatever. No, it's like, included. It's cute. Um, <laughs> Let me know later. I can I can clip him out if you want to. Yeah. Um, him uh, and um, but yeah, if you have any, I, uh, uh, Justine says I always get my three hundred and sixty photos. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, that happens when you do a photosphere. That's just part of it it's very very hard to let's just yeah very hard to do it that um i would say the best way the best way to avoid that is if you sort of uh you sort of just if you if you move if you move your foot your feet in line with when you're spinning um you should avoid it as much as possible if you move if you step a little bit if you do a little step then you're going to get your feet in but if you stay in exactly the same way and do a very tight circle you'll have less feet in it, yep. less. I find the, the best way to do that very tight circle is to put a coin on the ground. So it gives you a point of reference for where the center of your circle is. That's good, yeah. yeah. The other thing I can um, say is, if you've got one of those things mounted on your head, I have mine mounted on a, a helmet, it looks a bit like a crash helmet when I use it. Um, you actually can't see yourself because you're underneath the thing. All you see is the top of the helmet. The other good one is to, if you get a tripod, tripods really help. Um, and next level, if you get one of these little threaded, um, threaded, like, uh, extensions, then you get even less of the tripod. So these are, this was like three or four bucks, but it really improves your 360 photo quality. Yep. And if you do buy yourself a, a monopod with feet, which are very, very popular for using a 360 camera, uh, make sure you get one that's nice and stable because the, the number of times I see people posting, I broke my camera, is they only survive one fall to the ground. Um, actually, I'm gonna, actually, uh, let me show you my monopod. This is the Bushman, um, uh, the Bushman monopod. It's one of the most popular ones for 360 photography. So it's got this part here and then it extends and then it, it connects to this base. And it has a weight, so to, to prevent what uh, Paul was talking about, broken cameras, the weight really is important, especially on windy days. Well, actually, don't use a 360 camera on windy days, but but if um, weigh it down. But if if you if you oh if it's a slight breeze, the weight is essential to keep it down. And then you've got this here, and then this has got four levels, four levels of extension. Um, so, so it, it, it's a great height for a 360 street view, uh, street view photo. So then, and then it, Paul, can you see it? Is that good? Yeah, yeah, we can see the top of it and you. Awesome. So then that's it there. And then you can easily walk it around, move it, take a nice photo. And there you go. Boop, boop, boop. Ba 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 da 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 yeah. <laughs> it's also a microphone, so you can turn it on microphone. Um, wait a second. Um, use this for a screenshot, someone. Hang on. <laughs> Do it again. I'll pin you. Okay. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. So um, yeah, so this is the, now this one is, you if you want something a bit cheaper, the Benro, there's a Benro tripod, which I started with, which was about 50 bucks, um, which is good, but it's very, very uh, it's very unstable and it's very, I was very scared of it knocking over. So when I got this, I, I wouldn't actually, re sorry, 
I, I, if you're getting a 360 camera that's over 300 bucks, definitely get a good monopod because it's just too risky otherwise. Yeah, yeah, um, I got mine from um, B&H, which is a, a Photoshop with one outlet in New York. And I amused, the en- amused them no end because I ordered it from Australia before I left and put in the comments, I'll pick this up. And then got, are you sure? Do you know where we are? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, bro. It's okay. Um, yeah, I, I think I think 360 is a great, great part of the Go Local Guides program. I think it's like, it, it's something a bit unique and most local guides don't do it. So that's why I like doing it because it's like that, that next level of, yep. um, of, of it. And it's also really great if anybody at your local guides meetups has a 360 camera. It's great to get a group shot. Um, that's always a fun group activity yep. at a at a, a, a meetup. Especially if you do the one with all the hands reaching out to the camera. That that always looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's have a look. Oh, Edward 3A says so many retouch apps. Um, yes. So there is a, 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 a no. Sorry, somebody said retouch. Ania Jezkiz says retouch. So yes, retouch is a great app to remove the tripod from the bottom of a 360 photosphere or anything at the bottom feet in three, in 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 your phone. The app is like less than five dollars, maybe it's three dollars, but it's very good. Um, and thank you for that recommendation because that's a really good one. Um, maybe put put a link to that app in the in the in the chat because that's a yeah, really cool it. app. And you put it's it in there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, and yeah, it's a really good app. Um, let's have a look at some of the other comments. Falguni says 100 for the performance. Thank you, Falguni. Uh, <laughs> and a uh, link for the monopod, Manad. I think Manad. I will put a link for the monopod. Um, uh, it's it's the Bushman monopod. Uh, Jason also says Snapseed can be used for racing. Snapseed's also a good one. And I believe Snapseed's owned by Google, actually. I think my wife says correct, but like, how do you, do you, you know that? Ah, yep. Uh, yep. So my wife says it's, my wife also agrees with you saying it is, is correct. It is owned by Google. <laughs> um, Paul, is there anything else you want me to go, t- go into? No, I think that'll cover it quite nicely. Awesome. Well, um, thanks everyone for listening to my 360s chat, uh, a talk about Photospheres and I look, look forward to seeing your Photospheres in the album.